So we're going to compare two new Linux phones that are coming to market. One is the budget-friendly Pine phone. The other one is the Purism 5. They both have very similar specs, though granted the Purism 5 is much more of a premium device. Let's take a second real quick to look at the specs of the two devices. Okay, we're gonna take a second to look over the web pages for these two phones. Now I keep calling the Librem 5 the Purism 5, which uh, you've probably been screaming at your monitor or cell phone watching the video going, Arthur, you're getting the name wrong. $700. Hey, this actually has a pretty good spec sheet on the purchase page. So this is a 5.7 IPS TFT screen with a 1440 by 720 screen. Not terrible. The processor is a quad core 1.5 gigahertz ARM processor, three gigs of RAM, not bad. Storage, 32 gigabytes. That's kind of small for the price actually. And that's just me. Wireless, solid as usual. Baseband options. I don't know how to read that, but from what I've read, it's gonna work great in America. It's gonna be fine. GPS, standard, smart card, SIM card, earpiece. Headphone jack. Cannot stress this enough. You can't have a developer device without a headphone jack. Micro SD expansion, accelerometer. Now here's an area that I have a lot of concern is the cameras. Now I've used um, Ubuntu Touch on the Nexus 5. The Nexus 5 has pretty open hardware, but something as simple as taking a video or a photograph seems to be kind of a showstopper traditionally. And I hope this is something they can overcome with these newer devices. User replaceable battery, always cool. 700 bucks. Now let's jump over to the Pine 64. Okay, we have an A64 quad core processor. That's excellent. Two gigabytes of RAM. Nah, not as bad. But again, this is a $150 device. Almost the exact same resolution screen, 5.9. Is that the same size? Uh, 5.7. Oh, snap! The Purism has it. I mean, the Pine phone has a slightly larger screen. Cool. Bootable micro SD card. So, I think this means that it's going to uh, be able to boot from the SD where it doesn't necessarily say if it can or not here, does it? Ah, that, that, that's, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Again, the Pine phone is similar to like a Raspberry Pi, so we're gonna see how that works out. 16 gigabytes of storage, half of the other one, but again, you can boot to SD. HD digital video out, that's pretty cool. And uh, Wi-Fi, okay, here's one. The Wi-Fi is doesn't seem to be a single band. That means it's not dual band, so it's not gonna have a good Wi-Fi. That's actually the biggest negative I've seen so far because Wi-Fi is so, well, I live in the city, so Wi-Fi is always a problem. Bluetooth, good. GPS, good. <laughs> this comes with a vibrator. RGB status LED, selfie and main camera, a two megapixel and a five megapixel camera. Eee! Again, my concern about the cameras. I use my cameras on my phones all the time. Sensors, accelerator, gyroscope, proximity, compass, barometer, ambient light, that's good. Three external switches, up, down, and power. So that's gonna be the probably volume up, down, volume. Okay, hardware switches, switches for the LTE, Wi-Fi, microphone, speaker, USB. So they both have hardware switches, which is fantastic. Samsung J7 form factor, 300 milliamp battery. Does this one say how big the milliamp was? 30, oh, okay. But this is user replaceable, where if I've seen the videos, this one is actually, uh, I think you need to solder it in. And of course, a uh, headphone jack. Now this will run all these different operating systems. That's, that is very promising. Anyways, there you go. The $150 versus $700. The goals of the PRSM5 are the focus on free software and security. Hardware kill switches, um, open source bootloader, these kind of things. Whereas the Pine phone is more of like a Raspberry Pi, but with like a touch screen and pretty good software support. There is a level of premium that comes with the Purism phone. Hence why it comes with the heftier price tag. 
as opposed to the Pine Phone. The Pine Phone's going to come in at 150 bucks. For 150 bucks, for let's face it, a secondary phone is not a bad idea. Here's the thing people forget about: both of these phones are simply prototypes. You can buy them, you can use them your daily, but they're not going to be ready for prime time. Neither of them. The Pearson phone does have more polish, but at the end of the day, there are just certain things that are not going to be as smooth as established Android phones. Version 2 of these devices will probably be closer to a daily driver, a dog food-like scenario, but at launch, I just do not see these ones being a reliable daily user. I'm probably going to get the Pine Phone. Um, if you are going to get the Pearson 5 or the Pine Phone, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it down below. Alright guys, catch you guys in the next one.